In this tutorial, we're going to look at the new ES6 destructuring feature and how you can use it to work with arrays and also objects. So destructuring is basically breaking down a more complex data structure like an array or an object into its component primitives and then saving them into variables. So let's dive in with an example of how we could destructure an array. So here I have an array of strings that I'll destructure into component variables. So the syntax might look a bit backwards, but we take the name of the array, in this case languages, and put it on the right hand side of an assignment operator, with the left hand side having the variable names that we want to destructure the array into. So as you can see from the output on the right hand side, the variable A has the first string of JavaScript, B has the second string of Python, and so on and so on. So when destructuring an array, you don't need to specify all of the positions, but obviously you'll only be able to work with the variables that you do destructure from the original array. The other thing you can do is skip out positions in the array by not specifying the name and just adding an additional comma into the destructuring statement. And you can also assign default values if you're not sure whether a position is going to be filled. So whilst you can destructure any length of array, it's more common to destructure a smaller array that has a fixed size, or for example when you only need to match the first few values. Object destructuring on the other hand is more common, so let's now take a look at how object destructuring works with ES6. So taking a simple object like this, we can destructure it to its component values, but we need to make sure that the variable names that we define match the properties within the object. So you can see the syntax is very similar to destructuring an array, except this time we use the curly braces, and we now have all of those properties extracted into local variables, except for the unknown variable, which has no value as that doesn't actually exist in the original object. So again, we can assign default values if we need to. And we can skip out some properties if we don't need them. So one little tip is that you can actually extract one value from an object and save it in a local variable while saving the rest of the properties into a new object. So this is really useful if we want to throw away one property in the object. For example, we don't need to know whether the user is an admin, but we want to use the rest of the object in another part of our code like in this example, when we might be using the username and password to log in. So with this rather crude login function, we could supply the rest of object variable that just has the username and password stored in it. But there's one final thing that we can do with object destructuring, which will make this code a lot neater and that is to use a destructuring assignment called parameter context matching, where we basically destructure the parameter that's been passed to the function directly inside the function call. So here you can see the object has been destructured where previously there was just a single parameter, which sets them up as local variables within the function scope, so we don't have to access them on the object via their property names. You can also do the same parameter context matching with arrays, but that's a little bit less common, again because of the positioning of the items in the array may cause some unpredictability in your code. So there you have some examples of destructuring arrays and objects using the ES6 destructuring assignment.